On today's episode of Watch JR Go, we drive a cop car, a fast one. Alex and I are working on a super secret project you guys won't be able to see until his videos come out, but we worked all day and now it's time to get back on this and review his Caprice PPV. So, first, I made a stop on the way to the hotel. Let's see if Taco Burrito King is any good. I got uh, steak, chicken, chorizo, and a giant cup of horchata. Perfect. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jargo and today I'm here in Chicago with Legit Streetcars for the week. And he gave me his Caprice PPV as my like Turo slash rental car. And I am having an absolute blast with this and I figured we gotta make a video about it because Caprice PPVs are pretty special cars. So today we're gonna take you on a tour of the PPV. I'm gonna show you all the crazy things and we're gonna get it out and go for a drive, which I'm very excited to show you. So of course I will link Alex's channel below. He built this thing. It is a 2011 Caprice PPV and they made this thing until I think 2017 or 2019. I forgot which year exactly, but Holden built all of these cars and they were imported to America. The old Caprices look very, very different. They were actually built by GM. Of course, GM owned Holden. Holden is gone. Let's take a, a moment of silence for our fallen brethren over there in Australia. They made so many cool things. They made the Ute, they made the GTO. I mean, they made all kinds of awesome stuff. And almost everything Holden built got an LS engine. This car is no different. It's powered by the L77 V8 LS based. It's, it's in the LS family with AFM. It's a flex fuel car. Interesting note, all of the PPVs were flex fuel cars because government mandates uh, a lot of times made them use ethanol. So I'm sure that they were like, well, this car better run E85 and regular gasoline, regular unleaded, because government mandates might keep an entire department from buying these cars if they couldn't run on flex fuel. That's a big bonus for us because we know ethanol is excellent as a race fuel due to the octane. Now, the, you know, of course there's trade-offs because you got to flow a lot more, but these things have fuel systems that are built for ethanol. And that's kind of cool if you're trying to make it fast. This one is fast. We're going to pop the hood. We're gonna talk about how much fun it is to drive and it has a circle D torque converter in it. I know that, I don't know what cam's in it, but it has a nasty cam in it. And I mean, it's just wild. We'll do a cold start, but before we do that, let's do a walk around, check everything out. So of course, PPVs don't typically have fancy wheels. This one does not either, but it does have the general G maxes that are for the police department. If you look right there, it says justice on the tire. So uh, I think these were brand new, he told me. It's got the push bar on it. Just needs a couple of holes and a whaling siren put on there. Uh, now I already made fun of him on Instagram for this. Make sure you guys are following me. If you're not, we talked about how this headlight is brand new and uh, black inside, which is really cool. And then this one's, he said they're really expensive. So I get it, I totally understand. Uh, this one also says justice. I thought one said freedom, but these are the pursuit rated tires for the police department here. The car is the proper color scheme and it does have the holes for uh, all of the power and everything for the light bar. Uh, that's an antenna that just drops on. That's probably the stock antenna because the radio doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work well. It does work. I shouldn't say it doesn't work. These are Firestone Firehawk GTs and these are the pursuit rated ones as well. So the general pursuits on the front, Firehawk pursuits on the back. And of course, this is another antenna, which might be a GPS or just like radio, two-way radio communication, something like that, or data. Most police departments have data directly to the car too as well. A super interesting key on the PPV, instead of the nice, normal, fancy keys you get on a GM product, you have this very basic key that just has a remote built into it. Oh, and in the backpack, we can see there are four different antennas running into this antenna cluster that is right here. So that is kind of cool. That's like a multi-antenna. Alex's build has an exhaust converter and a cam and some other toys, a tune. Let's get the hood open and take a look. See what we can see under here. It's probably not just a big plastic cover like most of them. Ah, uh, no plastic cover at all. What you can see here is a very, very, very clean LS with long tubes. And uh, there's really not much else to talk about under here. It's a very empty bay, which is wonderful. Uh, I'm sure that's so you can upfit other modules in under the hood. Uh, it looks like there's an additional VIN plate that says L77 right there, the engine code, built in November 11. It says it's an 1111 car. Drive-by wire throttle body, and that's about all you can see. 
Uh, that's probably about an LS, it's basically an LS2 because it's a six liter. On the ID play under the hood, you can see this is flex fuel. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Very simple, very, very well done. It looks like an absolute race car, 823 heads. This thing is so simple to drive and the driving position is so good. It just does everything you want all the time, which has been pretty mind blowing. Very interesting underhood design too. Very interesting. That's not something I've ever seen on any other GM vehicle. Coming inside the PPV, you can see here we've got the spotlight so we can uh, light up the neighborhood. Unfortunately, uh, we can't actually light up the neighborhood because the grip is missing and there's no power to it or anything like that. It looks like this is the power wire for that guy. Uh, in here, it is very, very basic. We've got window controls. It is auto down on the driver and I think all the rest are standard. Auto lights, which don't seem to work. I think the Twilight Sentinel or the, the uh, I think now they just call it the light sensor, may not be working, but you have to turn the headlights on. Uh, cluster dimming, very simple. A very, very simple everything. Everything in here just does exactly what you want. There's nothing overkill. Like, look how dead simple these gauges are. It just looks like a bunch of plastic. But it's really cool. I mean, you've got every single mile per hour marked on the speedometer. When it turns on here, let's let it turn the key to on. And we will get certified speedometer, system check. And for some reason, there's a GPS antenna right there. I kind of wonder if that GPS antenna in the corner has something to do with the speedometer. I really don't know. Uh, on the wheel, we can control the screen. Uh, cruise control is on a stock, wipers on a stock. Uh, these are media controls, which is really cool in a police car. Uh, we do have MyLink, like a version one MyLink system. I've never seen before. Apparently the later PPVs got an upgraded one with uh, like MyLink 2 or something like that. And it's much better, much faster. This one does work though. It works really well. Obviously the radio kind of weak because I think they cut the wires to it or something. But uh, CD player, there's a CD in there and it works great. Here we have the hook for your Wayland system. If you have the sirens, it has a, you know, a handheld right here you can grab and then talk outside the car with that. Uh, climate control, audio control, little storage cubby I've been putting my stuff in. Oh, that's the trunk. Ha! <laughs> it just opened. Uh, 12 volt outlet. So there's no OnStar in here, which is kind of interesting. There's just a compass button. Obviously OnStar would be going off all the time with the things police are doing. Uh, up here we do have the sunglasses holder, which is kind of strange that it was even retained. Lighting controls, and that's about it. Over here we have a mount for maybe police lights, a few things like that. It could have been radar, I don't really remember. Um, usually stalker radar mounts low, but in the front maybe it mounts high. And uh, in the glove box we've got it looks like Alex's scan tool, the handle for the light, and just a few other random pieces of the car. Now the seats are very comfortable, I've gotta say. Like the seats are absolutely perfect. They have like the right amount of support, but they're very firm. And they have just enough bolstering that it does what you want. I mean, you gotta assume the cops are sending these things over curbs and into fields, and they're literally just beating these things to death and uh, it's built to handle it. You feel like you could do anything on the road in this car because it's balanced very well, honestly. Drives very well, has all of the power, and you're like, man, if I need to smoke that curb, this thing would have no problem if I hit it. <laughs> so uh, I really think that this thing is just built to an extreme level. Here's the console where you would have all your electronics. This is the laptop mount. Uh, it swivels usually so you can do your laptop things. Here is where your like Wayland controls go for your sirens, radios, all that good stuff. And uh, there's still some 12 volt power in there and maybe, I don't know, some data wire right there. A very interesting console shifter down here, uh, your traction control button, and uh, maybe sport or snow for the transmission right there. So in the back, Alex is switching to normal seats. A lot of people that have PPVs upgrade to a, a normal seat that come out of a different GM vehicle, but you do have the prisoner transport seats in the back. This is a 3P Extreme. Uh, honestly, it's even got padding, no seat belts or anything like that. So that's really fun. You can throw people in the back and sling them around and it's totally legal, which is cool. And that's about it. The back seats of these things are meant to be absolutely beat up. Check out these door panels. Like there's no handles, there's no window controls. That's just closed off. So uh, there's no way you're getting out once that door shuts. Guess you could break the window. That's really about the only way. Good luck in handcuffs. It's time to do the cold start so you guys can hear how crazy the exhaust is on this car. Uh, it echoes off the buildings and stuff when you're driving it around town. It's amazing. Nobody knows what to think when they see this thing. They're like, I, I just don't know what's going on right now.
should have got through the infotainment real fast. We'll fire it up. There's a CD in there. And uh, you go to media. Okay, we can't do that. We go to radio. Let's uh, turn that down real quick. There's uh, no aux in on this one. Uh, it looks like the Bluetooth is not enabled. And there is no navigation disc or SD card in there, however that works. There is config, which is cool, something you basically never see. That is a very, very odd setup. All the usual features just displayed in a way that you don't see on any cars in America. It shows the media playing in the gauges, and when we go into the performance mode, it literally shows you drifting the car. Okay, let's go play with this thing. I'm gonna leave it in performance mode, and we're gonna leave the windows down. It's so funny, look at it shaking on the brakes. That big cam is nasty. I think the stall's 3,800. It is a heck of a stall converter. So uh, let's let's have some fun. <laughs> it just drifted around the corner. And I'll do it again too. There is Chicago O'Hare right there. You can see the tower in the background and a beautiful A8L in front of me. turn-in is so nice. Just unbelievable confidence out of this car. know what to say about this car other than the driving position is perfect it just soaks up every bump in the road even on Chicago streets here and you you just feel you have so much confidence because the angle of your arm and everything like you have so much control over the wheel the car has so much power and this is like it's not that far off from what the police got like it's not like it has way more horsepower I mean it makes like 400 in the police car and this is crazy it's such a good car and just driving it around, enjoying your day, it's a blast. I'm not that into cars that aren't loaded and don't have every single option that was ever made. This thing is perfect, as is. If you want to go have a ton of fun, this is it, not the Crown Vic. I guess the difference is this costs seven times what a Crown Vic costs used after years of police service. So <laughs> you, uh, you got to know what you're getting into, and uh, the Crown Vic, it might it might be a little more bulletproof, but this thing is just fun. Uh-oh, we got a tunnel. I hope this light stays green. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So in closing, if you buy a Caprice PPV, you will always be that guy. The one who bought a used cop car and everyone is super upset all the time because they slam on their brakes and they see you and they were going like eight mile an hour over the speed limit and now they're all worried and i mean everyone's gonna think you're a cop but it is so much fun and i can't tell you how badly i need one of these now because it may be one of the most fun ls vehicles i've ever driven one of the most you're absolutely in control it's super weird i have more fun in this than i think i do in the corvette the corvette gets wild when you put your foot in it this thing is predictable when you put your foot in it and it goes where you want it. It's a very well balanced car. And if your friends throw up in the back or tear up your car, they can't even tear up your car. And it, you're not even mad because you can hose it out. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow, watch JR Go and Legit Street Cars on Instagram. We're doing a meetup on Thursday at Chicago Auto Pros. Uh, we're gonna have tons of people out there. So if you're here in Chicago, please come join us. We'll hang out, talk about cars, and just have a good night. So. Once again, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts not like this. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. Oh, it makes good sounds. And honestly, it looks good. And all it's missing is a big wrap that says clickbait patrol. The hotel I stayed at tonight is right beside Chicago Harley-Davidson right over there, and I just went and rode the live wire, 
and now motorcycles are ruined just the way Tesla's ruined cars. It's so unbelievably fast. Here's, here's my thoughts. I know you guys might expect this from me as kind of an EV guy, but I just came to Chicago Harley Davidson here and I was like, do you guys have a demo of the live wire? And they were like, yeah, we do. And I rode it and this thing is mind blowing. If you've been in a Tesla Model S performance, that's what this thing is on two wheels. We took it out on the highway and like instantaneously tears came out of both of my eyes. <laughs> I, I needed, I had sunglasses and a helmet on. I need a full face helmet to ride this. What an unbelievable bike. I think the best thing to say is that this feels like what you think sport bikes feel like or what sport bikes look like on YouTube. This is it in real life.